Hi, welcome to the Career Sprints YouTube channel. This is Rohit and we like to produce content that helps you with your professional development and continuous learning. Now this video is related to the content around the PMBOK 7th edition. And in our last video, we spoke about chapter 2 from the standards of project management, which primarily focuses or talks about value delivery. So this video is just a continuation of the explanation of the section that we discussed in our previous video, and we are picking up from where we left off. Right, so let's look at uh, value delivery components. So, you know, in an organization, you have several components that come together and deliver value to end users or to customers. So these components are projects, these components are departments or functions in a company, these components are, are products uh, or services that, are, that an organization has. These components could also be programs, which is basically a collection of related projects. And these could also be portfolios, which is the collection of all the projects and all the programs that you have in your organization. So these components can either be used individually, so a standalone project can deliver value to customers or the entire portfolio collectively can also deliver value to the end user or to the customer. Next, I want to talk about how the components come together to produce deliverables and in turn produce outcomes. So so all frameworks these days, whether you talk about Agile or you talk about any other framework uh, that you worked with, for example, ITIL uh, or any other project management framework, they all keep talking about outcomes, right? They keep talking about outputs and they keep talking about outcomes. And it is critical to recognize the dif difference between outcomes and outputs. So outputs are basically the deliverables or the products that you create as part of a project. So for example, you may have created a software right, which uh, is uh, which is delivered to a specific team within your organization. But the goal of the project is not to just produce that software, but the goal of the project is to enable certain business benefits to be realized through the use of that software, right? So you could have delivered software, but if that if that software lacked the functionality that was needed by the function to, to derive benefits from that software, producing that software would be useless. So the basic idea here is that all components in a value delivery system create deliverables, right, or outputs or, you know, tangible things, which, and through the use of these tangible things, you would be able to realize certain outcomes. So the outcome could be anything. It could be, for example, increase in revenue. It could be increase in sales. It could be uh, making the life of the customer a little easier, uh, it could be, for instance, uh, uh, reducing the the process inefficiencies and making the process faster. So anything that makes the life of your end user or customer or someone in the world easier or better, you know, that is an outcome, right? Uh, it, it solves someone's problem. So, you know, an outcome has to be something that solves a problem in the life of your customer. Right. So the point is that all components in a value delivery system will eventually, you know, produce outcomes and and the way they would do it is through the use or through creation of deliverables. And then it goes on to say that the outcomes create benefits, which are gains realized by the organization. So as I've said, you know, these could be gains which could be valuable for the end user or for the customer. Next, I want to talk about information flow, right? So what PMI says is that a value delivery system works most effectively when information and feedback are shared consistently amongst all components, keeping the system aligned with strategy and attuned to the environment. So basically what they're trying to say is that in an organization, you have programs, you have projects, you have portfolios, and you have a bunch of other things that are going on on an operational basis and on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So for any system to be able to produce value for customers there has to be a good flow of information so if you remember the agile manifesto or if you've gone through the agile manifesto where it says uh, you know where they uh, give more importance to communication and collaboration uh, you know over contract negotiation for instance right you would notice that you know agile frameworks for instance are all about transparency they are all about communication and you know when you have 
regular communication you know when you have easier ways to communicate you know where you can communicate more face to face uh, rather than using more passive ways of communication the information flow would be better and with better information flow between all these components between programs and projects and portfolios and senior leadership the organization would be able to move faster and it would be a leaner organization so leaner organizations always move faster that's why startups are able to do certain things that they are able to do which bigger organizations may be slower at just because of the size of the organization and that's why you know these days we have concepts such as you know a lean organization or uh, uh, you know companies are focusing on making the organization more flatter you know so that they are able to uh get the information across to a different person or to a different department much quicker and that and and be able to take decisions much quicker which will eventually benefit the organization so this diagram basically shows you uh you know how senior leadership passes on information to portfolios how portfolio communicates with programs and projects and how programs and projects pass on information to operation so senior leadership you know would basically uh you know pass on their strategy or their their strategic insight to the 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 managers or to the teams that manage portfolios the portfolios would in turn communicate the desired outcomes the benefits and the value to programs and projects or people working in programs and projects and then eventually uh you know the programs and projects would produce deliverables which would eventually need to be supported through the operational teams and similarly the information flows back from operations to programs and projects to portfolios and to senior leadership so broadly you know in this in this section you know we've spoken about value we've spoken about value delivery we've spoken about value components and we've spoken about how information should flow between all the different value components so that you are eventually able to create a system for value delivery within your organization and deliver value to your to your end users or to your customers by making their life easier better faster and so on and so forth so thank you for taking the time to come and watch this video if you like this video please hit like and subscribe um you know other than that uh, we would be making more videos on uh, different chapters of the pm box 7 so keep an eye on this channel and uh, you know you should be seeing more videos from us very very soon